Um, so far we looked at the uh, picture for uh, classes and um, interfaces. We haven't really looked at arrays and um, and uh, that's what we're going to do now. Um, now it turns out that um, according to the Java language spec um, if arrays had a class then all arrays of a particular type with a particular number of dimensions would implement clonable and serializable and they would extend objects. Now um, when you first see that um, it's a bit of a surprise because um, supposing you had this picture here where um, you've got this class R which extends L you would imagine that um, an array of R would extend an array of L but um, in fact it doesn't and this is true it really doesn't if you use um, something called reflection in uh, Java um, that enables you to examine classes and things uh, in software terms um, you can see that um, uh, if you ask it what its uh, immediate uh, uh, superclass is for R, you find it turns out to be object, not L at all, not L array or anything like that. Superclass of an R array is object, exactly what it says up here. And um, uh, now the thing is, uh, that's a very, uh, it's a very different picture to what you get if you ask about subtypes, because for subtypes the picture is uh, governed by what is uh, what is assignment compatible that's really what determines subtypes and um, for some types of course um, in terms of assignment compatibility it's an exact mirror image of the ordinary type picture so you take the ordinary picture for types you put um, a pair of brackets after everything on the picture and um, you get the same picture for um, arrays that's pretty simple and one extra thing you have to know, though, is that um, um, for both uh, primitive arrays and object arrays, um, they um, uh, they all both um, uh, are subtypes of um, object, and they implement clonable and serializable as two interfaces. And so there, that's the picture for arrays. Now if you want a picture for arrays of arrays, we just take that picture, put a pair of brackets after absolutely everything on the picture, go up to the object array, and now you have that object array um, extending um, uh, clonable and serializable, and uh, sorry, no, ex um, implementing clonable and serializable and extending um, object. And there you go. So why the question is why is there this difference and um, I suspect it's something to do with um, type safety I would imagine because it's these things can't be true classes um, because of the extra type information that sort of lingers around so for example if you had um, if you had an L array and an R array and um, you set them both to refer to the same to the same thing this new uh, thing we've constructed here new R2, array of uh, size 2, um, and then you use the L array to uh, try and set the first element, the zeroth element, to something of type L. And you're going to get a runtime error because it uh, knows that this L is actually pointing to this thing, which is really an R. And you can't say something of type R to being something of type L because it's the wrong way around. It's, uh, it's a subtype. And so it's going to give a runtime error. Uh, and that, that sort of problem never occurs with classes or interfaces. If you can, if you can do it, you're not going to get a, a, a casting error, uh, unless you deliberately do cast everywhere. Of course, that's a different matter. But um, if it uh, if it gets past the compiler, you shouldn't get casting errors for for uh, classes. But of course, you will in this case because it's not like an ordinary class; it's an array. And uh, you notice the difference here between uh, subclass and superclass in the case of arrays and supertype. That's very different between the two. So um, here's a, a shortcut. Um, if you want to try and find the least upper bound for two array types, you've got like a, an X array and a Y array, you want to find the least upper bound, it's very simple. You can pull off uh, brackets until you so you haven't got any more to pull off, basically. Take a take each of the brackets out, and it's the least upper bound of x and y as an array. So 
where what it means is um, if if this least upper bound of x and y turns out to be a and b, then um, a and b array really means sort of like a array and b array. And uh, you'll note that you can't do that if x or y is a primitive, because if it was a primitive, you had a primitive array here, and you took off um, the last uh, brackets over here, you'd have a primitive, and that's not a reference type at all. So the different beasts all together, so you can't do that. You must retain the last pair of brackets on in the case of primitives. If you had two sets of brackets here, you could pull one of them off in the case of a primitive, but uh, not if you only got one. Of course, it's all right for um, other reference types because um, uh, you still get left with a reference type over here. So uh, that's um, that should be enough information now to be able to work out how to deal with arrays in uh, terms of intersection types and uh, and uh, ternary statements that contain arrays so you can work out what the least upper bound is and that sort of thing as if you've got a primitive array you know you've got a super type of uh, object uh, serializable and clonable so you can intersect that with whatever the other one is if you're left with a primitive or whatever that's all well, fairly straightforward I'll give you some examples next time